The Belgian Grand Prix and Verstappen's dominance have been shadowed by a topic that's much more interesting to the F1 world right now, the budget cap breach in 2022. It seems like three teams have spent a bit more than they should have, with one rumoured to be in a massive breach compared to the other two. But when all things come down to it, the sacred financial rule was not respected, and the FIA is mad. After their latest statement, and after tripling the numbers of teams that have caused a breach in the budget cap in 2021, one can now but wonder, is the rule of spending a certain amount of money working equally applied to all teams on the grid? The budget cap was introduced in 2021, and it didn't take long for certain F1 teams to break it. If you saw the Belgian Grand Prix or the entirety of the 2022 season, you'll understand why the F1 fans are very angry when Red Bull's name is mentioned yet again for breaching the financial limit that is set by the governing body. Because at first glance, it looks like the only way to have a massive leap in the championship is by cheating the amount of money you're allowed to spend in one year. But then again, there should be penalties for this crime, right? Red Bull didn't go unpunished in 2022, as they had deducted a 10% wind tunnel time as well as $7 million they had to pay in cash. So all in all, you'd think this is a very huge penalty, and it does have the potential to shift the momentum to their rivals. Quite the contrary, not only did it not shift the momentum, but for some reason Red Bull were able to find even more performance in the RB19, the 2023's challenger, so much so that they stopped with the development of the car in the middle of the season and now have focused entirely on 2024. The Austrian team is currently threatening to achieve a record that no other team has been close to completing in the history of the sport, winning all the races in one calendar. And keep that in mind that this is a 22-race calendar that we're talking about, which is quite an impressive feature and does not come by pure luck alone. Now, there's no doubt that under the great minds of Adrian Newey and Pierre Wachet, Red Bull were able to build a machinery like no other on the grid as these two have often raised questions as to why the entirety of the grid is struggling with the ground floor effects when the philosophy is not that hard to understand. It's easy to say that when you have a rocket ship in your hands, I would say, but nonetheless, Red Bull can start from the pit lane with both of its cars, and the chances that one of Perez or Verstappen would finish on the podium or even P1 are almost a given guarantee. While it's unfair for us to blame all of this on the budget cap breach in 2021, as it was done mostly on that year's car and not the development of the following campaign, Red Bull are now one of the three teams that have been rumoured to commit a breach to the budget cap in 2022 as well. There have been initial talks that Dr. Helmut Marko's salary at Red Bull has been one of the critic points as to where the Austrian team could have committed a breach because his role within the team is not yet specified and precisely ordered as such, meaning that the FIA is having second thoughts as to whether or not his salary should impact the entirety of Red Bull's allowance in a particular season. But still, Red Bull will be one of the three hottest talking points in the summer break. The other two teams are Mercedes and Aston Martin, and luckily for Red Bull, they are not the ones that are in the biggest trouble. Aston Martin is the team that is reportedly going under severe investigation, and this summer break should go heavily in their spotlight, but for all the wrong reasons. We've seen a massive leap in performance from Alonso and Stroll, and while the Spaniard had won six out of eight podium finishes in the first race, the new compound tyres have kicked them down hard, and now they're struggling to pick the pace up again. Nonetheless, this should not distract us from the fact that they might have used some dirty and illegal tactics to be where they are right now, and that itself should be severely penalised. For things to be even worse, Aston Martin is one of the teams that has also committed a budget cap breach in 2021, but of a procedural nature, something that Red Bull and Mercedes are now heavily under investigation for. While we're still waiting to see which one of the teams has broken the sacred financial rule the dirtiest, one thing still remains to be answered. Does the budget cap make any sense right now? I know that the rest of the grid has been brought closer, and Wolf himself said that the only reason Mercedes is not catching up to Red Bull is just because of the amount of money they can spend, but having three teams breach it in the second year shows straight disrespect. And all of this can be traced down to one reason, insufficient penalties. You could give the benefit of the doubt that Red Bull would have been where they are now even if they didn't spend the extra amount of money on catering services, but considering the controversial end of the 2021 season, I guess this is a burden that Verstappen would have to carry on his own until the end of his racing career. However, when Red Bull was found guilty of the budget cap, Wolf admitted publicly that if he sees that the penalty given by the FIA is not hurting Red Bull in any direct way in terms of performance or race pace, then he would save around $7 million in cash just so that his team could pay for new parts and new development tactics for the ultimate goal of bringing themselves back to the top of the championship. I know what you're thinking right now. Why would Wolf admit to a process of public cheating right when his team is at the lowest point they've been in the last eight years? But this goes to show one very clear thing. The teams are not scared of the FIA's penalties right now when it comes to breaching the budget cap. 
Lewis Hamilton has been one of the first drivers to criticise the penalty. And while Wolf had a bit more of a diplomatic response to the entire outcome, the seven-time world champion didn't save words regarding this matter, as he went on to say, It's definitely a concern breaching the budget cap in 2022. It wasn't really a big punishment last time, so there will be people who will go for it again and know they'll just get a slap on the wrist. F1 is a sport of meritocracy, as said by many experts out there. And while Mercedes was able to throw around $400 million per year in their golden season from 2014 to 2020, now they need to be very careful with what parts they're bringing and what development path they're choosing. A process that Red Bull has done very intelligently, whether it's by breaching the budget cap for potential two consecutive seasons or not. This is something that urges an emergency response from the FIA. And while Stefano Domenicali, the president of the sport, sincerely hopes that if a team is found guilty, the only way they could be penalised is through sporting penalties and not cash because it does not affect the team's performance in any way whatsoever, we're yet to see Red Bull's demise from the sporting penalty of the 2021's breach as well. The FIA is not very friendly oriented towards F1 as a sport. And quite frankly, this might be the perfect time for these two bodies to communicate and embody as one. Because a great enemy is knocking on their porch. The threat of every team not respecting the budget cap and spending as much as they want due to the penalties they have been categorized as slaps on the wrist by many F1 drivers, Lewis Hamilton included. In the meantime, the governing body is not very really happy with the accusations that they have received about three teams being accused of breaching the budget cap. And in their official statement, they express their dissatisfaction with how this entire situation is being broadcast in the general media. As it stands, the auditioning fieldwork is still ongoing and is scheduled to conclude in the upcoming weeks, after which there will be a period required for the finalization of the review. There is not, and has never been, a specific deadline for certification, and any suggestions of delays to this process or potential breaches are completely unfounded. The COSCAP administration will formally communicate its findings according to the procedures set out in the financial regulations. The time frame is intentionally not fixed in order not to prejudice the robustness and the effectiveness of the review. Meanwhile, there are teams that have made massive leaps in the middle of the 2023 season, such as McLaren. And while there haven't been any direct accusations towards them since the talks are now for the previous campaign, one thing remains to be answered. Has McLaren shown every team out there that you can find one to two seconds of performance legally and not by overspending money and wind tunnel time? The question is yet to be answered until the very end of the season. And while Spa has proven to be a very difficult challenge for Norris and Piastri, with the latter suffering from a turn one crash with sights, the Woking base squad is definitely on the rise and their progress should be followed steadily. All in all, the budget cap has a very good basis to be one of the best rules ever created in the world of F1. But only if every team out there complies to it and the backmarkers like Alfa Tari, Alfa Romeo, Haas and Williams are able to pick up some good sponsors and fight regularly in the midfield. Like this, it seems like every year we're going to be having the same conversation, whether or not the richest teams in the F1 world have committed a breach or not.